Okay guys, so this is a video on the staying healthy topic, which is B1 part C. Remember to try and take some notes as we go along. Remember you can pause the video, so if I'm going quickly, just pause it and write down what I've said or what's on the slides. And if you do have any questions, jot them down so you can ask them on uh, Monday evening when I see you. Okay, here we go. So, this topic we're going to be looking at um, problems with the body. So, first uh, section we need to talk about are infectious or non-infectious diseases. Get it right. So, um, first things we need to talk about are deficiencies. So, there are vitamin deficiencies and mineral deficiencies, which we did touch on in the last uh, topic. So, and examples for these are scurvy, which is a lack of vitamin C, and anemia, which is a lack of iron. Now, remember, for those of you going for the higher tier, the iron is important for making hemoglobin, which is the part of the red blood cell that carries oxygen. So, other things that can go wrong that are non-infectious are disorders of the body. So, that means things like diabetes or cancer. And the final class of non-infectious diseases it would be genetically inherited diseases. And so, something like red-green colour blindness counts as one of these. So, for each of these, you need to be able to give an example of a cause and a specific disease linked to that cause. So all of these are things that you can't catch from other people. It's a way to remember that they're non-infectious. If you're in a room with someone with cancer, you won't catch cancer from them. So on the other hand, there are the ones that you can catch from other people, which would be the infectious diseases. Now infectious diseases are caused by pathogens. These are things that carry the illness into your body. They cause the illness. So first type is fungi or funguses. Uh, an example of something that can cause is athlete's foot. Bacterial infections, I'm sure we're all aware of. The example the exam board particularly like is cholera. Viral infections, these are caused by viruses. A good example of this is the flu. And then there are things called by pr uh, caused by protozoa. So they are microscopic creatures. And a good example of that is malaria. Now just to be careful, malaria is carried by mosquitoes, but the illness is caused by the protozoa that are carried by the mosquitoes. So you can catch it from mosquitoes, but they are not the pathogen. They're what we call the vector. But we'll uh, discuss that a little bit later for those of you doing the higher. So the pathogens are what produce the symptoms of your disease, and they do this by damaging the cells or by releasing toxins. Sometimes some symptoms of diseases are actually caused by the body's immune response. But as far as we're concerned, we just need to focus on it being caused by damage to cells. So how does the body fight off illness? Well, it's the white blood cells that we're interest, interested in. And the white blood cells produce antibodies. Now, the antibodies lock, lock onto antigens, which are on the surface of the pathogens. And the pathogens have unique antigens. So the antigens are specific to the pathogen. So that means that the white blood cells have to produce the correct antibodies in order to kill the pathogens. Now once your body has produced antibodies for a specific illness, it can produce them again, so it's always capable of fighting them off. So this leads us to vaccinations. So a vaccination is a way of giving a person immunity to an illness. And the way that is done is by injecting them with a harmless version of the pathogen. So that's either a um, dead version of the pathogen, or it could be a slightly different pathogen, one that's not going to cause the full-blown illness, but is similar enough that the body's response would be the same. <coughs> but what's important is that what's injected into the body has antigens, because that's what triggers the immune response. So once the body's re reacted to those antigens, it produces memory cells which remember those antigens so that it can then fight it off again. Now, immunisation is a bit of a top of touchy topic because some people are very against it and some people are very for it. Reasons you might be against it is because immunisation does ca carry a small risk because you can obviously cause the illness that you are trying to prevent. It is very unlikely, but it is a possibility. There can also be side effects. 
at this point I would like to point out that um, autism is not one of them. There is absolutely no link between the MMR virus and autism, uh, MMR vaccine and autism. Now, the risks of people not being immunised, however, are quite large and they do affect the whole of society. So in order for um, immunisation to be effective, we need um, 80 to 90 percent of the population to be immunised, which gives um, what we call herd immunity. So it means that there aren't enough people that can get ill for the illness to spread. So obviously if people do get ill, we need to treat them. The immune system is not always enough. So there are things we can use. We have to use the right thing depending on the illness. So antibiotics are only useful in treating bacteria and fungi. And the way they work is they destroy the pathogen. Viruses are a little more difficult. Uh, we do have antiviral drugs, but they don't actually destroy the virus. All they do is slow down the development of the pathogens, which gives the, hum the um, immune system a chance to fight it off. Now, when it comes to developing treatments, they have to be tested before they can be used on people. So before they're tested on people, they'll be tested on animals, computer models and samples of human tissue. Obviously, there are ethical reasons as to why you don't want to just go and test um, an unknown drug on a person. It uh, could do more harm than good. Now, as a result of the use of antibiotics, you may be aware that um, we are developing antibiotic resistant diseases now. And um, this is because too many antibiotics have been used or full courses of antibiotics haven't been used and a lot of bacteria are mutating and developing resistance to them. Um, an example of this is MRSA, MRSA, which you may have heard being an issue if you go into hospital. So, um, I think I've got these slides out of order slightly, but never mind. Um, on the issue of developing drugs, uh, we do do trials on humans. So once the drug has been tested on enough uh, animals and computer models and it's been shown to have promise, we then test it on patients. Well, when we do um, trials on patients, it's very important that we do double blind trials. The exam board also like to ask about this. So a double blind trial is where you give half the patients the drug and half the patients are given a placebo. So a placebo being essentially a sugar pill. So they're, t they're not told whether it's the real thing or not, which is very important. And the doctors also don't know who's received the real drug or not. The reason for doing that is it stops the results being biased. If someone knows they're getting a drug and the doctor knows they're getting the drug, they could expect to see results that aren't there. And likewise, if someone knows they're not getting the drug, they may not respond even though the placebo effect is a real thing. Giving someone sugar pills does make them get better. No one knows why, though. It's quite interesting, because even if you tell someone it's a placebo, they still get better. But we don't need that for the test. I'm just going off topic. OK, so cancer. We do need to talk about cancer. Cancer cells are kind of amazing, really. They are cells that just keep dividing forever and always. Regardless of how much food is there, regardless of what's available, they never ever stop. Normal cells reach a point where they stop, cancer cells don't, and that's what makes them cancerous. Um, and it is those growths that are the tumours that we see. Now, um, cancers, most cancers aren't infectious. There are some that you can get if you um, get specific types of virus, but we're mostly going to ignore those for the exam. There are things that you can do that can increase your chances of developing cancer. So um, to avoid or reduce your risk, you need to try and avoid sunbathing because obviously if you get sunburnt too often, you increase your chances of getting skin cancer. You can avoid, that does say avoid, <laughs> believe it or not, um, being overweight because if you are overweight, you have a lot of fat cells and the fat cells are very active and that extra activity increases your chances of some of them becoming cancerous. Uh, large amounts of red meat have been shown to increase your chances of developing cancer. Uh, eating a lot of fruit and veg can help reduce your chances of getting cancer, uh, particularly broccoli. Broccoli is ace. Um, 
just generally being fit and healthy, so exercising regularly reduces your risk of cancer. And avoiding drinking too much alcohol. Um, again, it's these are just risk factors. So these are things that can change your chances of getting cancer. <clears throat> Excuse me. So malaria is one of the ones that we have to talk about. I did mention it earlier. So malaria is caused by a protozoan called plasmodium. So it's a type of uh, protozoa that feeds on red blood cells. And it's the plasmodium is carried by the mosquitoes, as I said earlier. And in that case, we call the mosquitoes vectors. They're, vectors are things that cause diseases to be transmitted. And it's uh, when you get bitten by a mosquito that has this plasmodium present in it that you can catch malaria. So the plasmodium is technically a parasite because it lives inside the body eating our red blood cells and humans are the host to it. Now because we know how malaria is spread, that is a, has allowed us to control the spread of it because simply introducing things like mosquito nets and uh, insect repellents can reduce the occurrence of malaria. So knowing how diseases are spread is a big way to prevent the uh, spread of them. So that's pretty much everything we need to cover for this topic. Uh, I'm hoping most of this we already had a bit of an idea about. So again, remember, if you've got any questions, ask me on Monday. I hope this wasn't too horrific being my first video. Apologies if it was, guys. And I'll see you on Monday.